We recently picked up this Hyundai Genesis Coupe and it came with two major problems. First one, it's a Hyundai. The engine was blown. Timing chain, classic issue. The second problem is that it's an automatic car, so we need to manual swap it. Before we do that, I just wanna say, it's okay if you like auto cars. Don't go manual swapping cars just because you see other people doing it or you think it makes you cool. If you like an auto, that's fine. But over the years, we have done our fair share of manual swaps and it's actually not as hard as you think and this is really all you need to get it done. But why, Robbie? Why did we buy an automatic vehicle? There's a few reasons you might want to get an auto car over a manual. In the case of this car, we literally found this thing and it just happens to be auto, so we're gonna swap it. But a lot of times when you get an automatic car, they attract a different audience. So usually they're not modified, they're more well taken care of, and they can only really be thrashed on as much as the automatic transmission lets you thrash on it. For example, my Z was like a one owner automatic older man who's owned that car his whole life, and it was just a bone stock car. It's a lot easier to find that situation, especially in a car like this where the take rate on this was like 75% automatic, just meaning that most of the sales were auto. So the cars that were sold manual were sold to enthusiasts who probably wanted to modify them and play with them. So the chances of you getting one that hasn't already been messed with is a lot lower. And also enthusiasts are willing to pay a premium price for a car that is already manual. So you can get these a lot cheaper in an auto and it just a lot of times it just makes a lot more sense. So today we're going to basically cover doing like a car to car swap. Most of what I'm going to say applies for putting like a Genesis transmission, for example, into a Genesis. If you're doing like a full motor swap, you're putting like a CD009 into something else. A lot of this will still apply, but you're gonna need to find like adapter plates and random little bits and pieces that kind of like make your swap fit better. And this is actually not everything you're gonna need to do a manual swap. Some of this is just example parts. But I'll go over everything you need. For a drive shaft, something like this, automatic transmission is actually longer than the manual. So you need a new drive shaft because this drive shaft is longer to fit the gap for the manual. Sometimes they have a different size input or output shaft depending on, again, the auto versus manual. Always need a drive shaft and if it's a front wheel drive, you're probably gonna need axles because the axles are gonna be different lengths. Transmissions, try and find one from a trusted place because for example, the transmission I put in my Z, I bought from some head and it grinds gears. Always try and get a transmission from somewhere trusted because you never truly know. It's like buying an engine for an engine swap. You don't know until you get it home and you really take it apart. Obviously, depending on how you got your transmission, it might need a slave cylinder. The slave cylinder normally bolts onto the transmission and it has a clutch line coming off it. It's what pushes your, your clutch on and off. This is actually a Subaru slave cylinder because Hyundai has a weird setup where the slave is built directly into the transmission. I've literally never seen something like this. The throat bearing is part of the slave cylinder. Most of the time you're gonna find something that looks like this and you're gonna to need to put it onto your trans and they don't always come with one, so make sure you get a slave. And you're also going to need a master cylinder. So this will attach to your clutch pedal. You don't have to get the OEM part. It doesn't have to be the exact way it came from the factory. This is from a 240. I use a 240 master because stock Genesis master actually it takes a line from the brake booster. So you also would have to get a new brake booster because it has to has the new fitting that goes over to the clutch. It's a lot more work and not to mention, these things are very bad. They're made of plastic. Over time, the hole ovalizes uh, and people go through these things all the time. Like if you just go like this, you can see it's already got a lot of play in it. I don't know why they made these plastic, but they did. Obviously you guys have to do research on all the cars you're doing, but in my situation, it doesn't make sense to use one of these. It's just a lot more hassle and work. So we're using one from a 240. You also need a clutch line to go from your master cylinder to your slave cylinder. I would normally make one because it's always just way easier. You can get just brake line, it's super cheap. You grab some fittings and you make a line that goes from one end to the other end. And this is just something that I do. It's a little money saving tip. You need the clutch pedal from the car. This is the only thing aside from the trans that really has to be like vehicle specific. You'll notice that like a clutch pedal has a tiny little square. And when you do a manual swap, a lot of times the brake pedal has a big chunk. So. You can get a manual brake pedal and a manual clutch pedal. That's what we did on the Z. Both of them are very small. If you're trying to save some money or you just forgot to get a brake pedal like I did for this video, you can go ahead and you can just cut your stock brake pedal. On my Genesis Drift Card, that's what I did. It's the same thing. It just doesn't look as pretty. If you guys aren't trying to spend a lot of money, that's another little place you can save some. Some of these are super obvious. You need a shift knob. You also need a transmission brace. Some cars like a Genesis, you just need this tiny little piece. A Genesis specifically, you can actually use the auto brace if you spin it around, it fits up. Again, do research on your exact swap. And the most obvious thing that you need when you're doing a manual swap is you need a flywheel and a clutch. This is what I would say to do a clutch upgrade. I don't care what you tell me. Do not put an OEM clutch in this car. You don't wanna take it back apart and do this again. So in this example, we're actually using an X drifting clutch because it's a 
high stage, it'll hold a high amount of power, and it actually drives really smooth. Spec Clutches does a really good job of making like really smooth clutches. The automatic flywheel doesn't have a face plate for your clutch to mate to, and you're gonna need a pressure plate. So again, this one is a little bit used. That is really what's gonna make your manual transmission a manual transmission. Just get a good quality clutch. You don't wanna to have to take all this apart again. Some other things that you could do, uh, depending on your car. Obviously, the newer your car is, the more it's not gonna like doing a manual swap. I've actually never put a manual ECU in a car off swap. You don't really need to. When I did my Z, it didn't even throw a code. The car has no idea that it is now a manual car. When I did my Genesis, it threw tons of codes. They're newer cars. It was looking for sensors that no longer existed and all kinds of stuff. But what we're planning on doing with this car, because it's, the harness is the same, it just has a couple different sensors. So what we're gonna do is just repin the harness. Again, it's another area for us to save some money. We're gonna take the sensor for like the clutch being engaged and we're gonna wire that up to the e-brake. The e when the e-brake's up, the car will start. When the e-brake's down, the car won't start. Simple things like that, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain in the but it's gonna save you a significant amount of money over getting the ECU and doing the full wiring harness because you also have to consider that, again, on a more modern car, the sensors are also inside. So I would have to replace not only the engine harness on this car, but the interior harness to read things like the clutch pedal because that's on the interior harness now, which is a whole pile of shit. And that's pretty much all you need. It's not a lot of parts. It might take you a couple weeks to acquire everything that you really need to get it done, but it's honestly super easy and it doesn't take a lot of messing around to do. And obviously, just depending on how you go about doing the swap, there's a couple little things to note. If you're leaving the automatic ECU, you need to cross the wires on your neutral safety switch. So when you put your car in park, it sends a signal that the car is in park. There's a little switch in there on the Genesis to make sure it worked before. I just taped it up, it worked. Basically just cut the sensor off and cross the wires and it just always thinks it's in park and it will always start and run no problem. If you are ever doing a swap and you get to a point of failure, like it won't start, something's wrong, trace back every little sensor that you used to have and find out what it does and why it's not working. Because I've had so many emails from people asking me, how did I do the swap on this? Theirs isn't starting and what's the difference? And it's always something stupid like the neutral safety switch, they forgot to wire it shut. You also might need to do body mods. Don't be afraid to do that. The shell of a car should be the same. I agree with you, but when you put this manual transmission in the Genesis, you have to cut a little bit of like the transmission tunnel. I don't know if there's a spacer plate that I'm supposed to have. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe the mount that I'm using, because I'm using the auto mount, doesn't sit low enough. There's always gonna be things that you have to do. If it doesn't work, you might have to make it work. It's not gonna go seamlessly every time, but the point here is you can do it. It doesn't have to be OEM parts. It doesn't have to drop fit perfectly in. You can make it work with whatever you have as long as you have parts that do the job. A clutch pedal that pushes a master cylinder, that pushes a slave cylinder, as long as they do their job. So hopefully that helps you guys. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And if you guys that are watching know anything about manual swaps, how about some people in the comments below? There's there's not always a ton of information on this stuff, so if you guys know things, share your knowledge, help people out. If you guys actually wanna see this go down, make sure you watch the next video. This is, again, every time we do a manual swap, I feel like we get a little bit better, a little bit faster, and we know a little bit more, so I'm sure we're gonna run into some issues, but I'm sure this will be the most seamless swap we've done so far. So if you guys are not subscribed, make sure you do so, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out, and stay committed.